Oh, and one more thing. Go out and watch some really good comedians. Watch how they do it. Not self-deprecating, sad, poor me comedians, ballsy comedians. Go out and watch how they're ballsy, how they're forward, how they tease, how they play with the audience. You don't have to take it that far. Remember, a little bit goes a long way. video I want to talk about push-pull and the power of push-pull energy and communication. And I want to talk about it in a specific way. I don't want you to use it as a technique, a routine, or a line. I want you to make it natural. I want you to make it a part of you. You know, an example of a poll is I love you guys. You guys are awesome. And I always can't wait to, to meet new clients because you got hearing your success stories warms my heart. You know, that's a poll. There's a poll on that energy, right? A push could be, you guys are such a pain in the ass. Oh my God, you have the most difficult challenges. You come up and you take forever to grow. But hey, anyways, I love you guys. Anyways, and you see, I did a push, then I did a little pull on the back end, right? The old example is something like, uh, you know, that sweater is amazing. Where'd you get it? A secondhand store? There's a push, a pull, and then a push on the back end of that. And you could do this stuff all day long. You can do it with objects. You can do it with things you see. You can do it with uh, sentences and things you hear. Guys tend to do this with each other naturally. And you need to start doing this with attractive women. Not in the sense to be mean. There's this old thought, you know, they'd say negging in the old pickup community was, I'm going to neg her to bring her down a peg to make her insecure. No, I don't think of it as making a woman insecure. I think of it as playing, like on the playground when we're kids. If she's confident and I'm confident I open my heart and I have fun with her and I look at her and I smile and I go I don't like you she knows I like her because I'm giving her I like you energy right and then after a little bit I go you're starting to you're starting to warm uh, wear on me I'm starting to like you now I think I think you're interesting there's something about you you know I'm gonna let you be my muse and this is these are the games you play they're playful they're like children on the playground having a blast so I want you to think about push-pull as this dance you can have with a beautiful woman, this play you can have, okay? So what you can do to practice this, it's very simple and it's very polarizing. Now, for those of you who don't understand, you want to polarize a woman. You want to tease her and create tension between each other because that turns into sexual tension. And if I look at you and I say, you know what, you're a pain in the ass. But I smile, I'm creating a little bit of tension. But you do have a sexy ass. Now I'm creating a pole, a little bit of a pole with tension on it because I said you have a sexy ass. So this is a sexual connotation, right? And when you start to play with this stuff, it could actually spark that part of a girl that wants to flirt. It can open the door to her wanting to get to know you. Maybe she didn't even notice you before this, but you said something with a little push and it caused her to wake up and start to have fun with you. So. I want to invite you guys to go out and practice this and start to use it everywhere. But before I do, I want to go back to a story. I remember when I was first learning this stuff. I was first learning to banter. I was first learning to be playful. I was first learning to have fun uh, with girls. And I went out to do the, uh, my very first bit of banter. And I, was, I met this girl. It was at an El Pollo local restaurant, of all things. And she was the, working at the counter. And she was really cute. And I was really nervous because I'd never done this before. And I wanted to tease her. I didn't want to just give her a compliment. I wanted to tease her. And I remember she was trying to get some quarters out of that, those plastic wrappers. She was trying to pull the quarters out. And the quarters were stuck and she's pulling on them and I was waiting for my change. And I nervously, I was looking down, she was looking down and I nervously said, um, um, at first, and I was kind of holding it in and I said, you know, you're gonna have to hurry up. I don't have all day. And I smiled and I opened my heart like I am. And she goes, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And, she's rolling, and then she looks up and sees my face. And I'm smiling there and I'm looking at her and I'm giving her like a kind of like a, a coy smile. And she suddenly lights up like a Christmas tree. And she goes, oh, well, maybe I just won't give you your food or said something like that. I don't remember what she said. And then the next thing I know, we banter back and forth a little bit more. And I'm like, fuck, that worked. And as I'm walking away from the counter, she pulls out a large drink and slides it across the table to me. He goes, here, it's on the house. And I was like, wow, that's powerful. So I started to do it more. That immediately made me addicted because she loved it. I loved it. I wasn't trying to tear it down. We were having fun together. I actually ended up dating that girl later. And uh, I went back to the restaurant though to do it some more. And I started doing it with three different women that worked there. And the next thing you know, I was getting free food like crazy. I realized the ability to tease and play was kind of like having really good tits and ass. Now, I tried over the years to teach this to people that weren't embodied or didn't have a good level of feeling in their body, but it was hard. They would go in their head and they'd be like, you know, you're a dork. 
And it doesn't work when you do that. Or, you know what, you're trouble. I, th I think you're trouble or you're trouble. And they get angry and the women be like weird. But as soon as a client starts to get embodied, I always start to help him to uh, do this because it's just so powerful for attraction. And so kind of let this idea in. If you've got any level of embodiment or even if you don't, you can start practicing this now. You can start developing the ability to do push-pull and we're gonna go into that in a minute. And the reason you wanna develop it is because as you start to calibrate more and more and you get a greater level of embodiment, able to feel your body, you want this stuff to naturally start coming out. You might suck at it at first, you might be uncalibrated, but it will come together with time. What I can get away with with pushes now is way more than what I used to be able to get away with and pulls too. Fuck, you're sexy, look at you. There can be tension on your poles, guys. Your pushes can be really mild, they can be really big. You dork. Come here, you dork. And let me come here, I wanna smack your ass. You need a spanking right now, don't you? Or come here, you need a hug right now. I'd rather hug you, you're really sweet. You know? Hey, I love that uh, necklace on you, it's beautiful. Because it's warm and it's open. Can I steal it? I'm gonna take it. Here, give it, give it to me. <laughs> See, I've done stuff like this so many times and I fuck with people. You know what, I'm gonna steal your necklace. I love that necklace, I'm stealing it. And you just learn to have fun with people and people will laugh. They'll appreciate it. It, it, it opens them up. And then what it opens them up for later is real connection, deep conversation. Because if you really open somebody up with push, pull, teasing, bantering, then pretty soon what they do is they start to relax more and more around you. And as they do, they wanna to get to know you better. They start to become curious about who you are. You know, who are you? What, what, what do you care about? What's important to you? Where'd you grow up? These questions that most people don't give a hoot about with the average person on the street, um, they start to actually care about because they, they like you, because you make them laugh, you make them smile, you tease them. You're not afraid to say no to them. See, that's the other piece of a push-pull that we don't talk about enough. But if you become really good at pushing, you know what? I don't know if I like you yet. They realize this guy can say no to me. This guy can set a boundary with me, especially a hot girl. Because most guys just cater to me. And this guy's teasing me and is saying, you know what? Saying all kinds of crazy stuff to me and he's not afraid that I'll get upset. This guy can be fun to hang out with. Unlike the average guy who's always catering to me, you know? And so this is what's really important. So kind of let this idea in, let it sit with you, let it float with you, let it flow. So to practice this, how do you practice push pulls? The very first thing I did was I got a journal and I just started writing them down. I would go to a coffee shop uh, or a restaurant. I remember it was this particular restaurant in Long Beach and I would sit and look in the room and I'd look for, and I would start with things people said and I would hear something somebody said and I'd write a push or a pull for that. And I'd write a couple for each thing. I'd, I'd write like five a day. I'd sit there, there's something that person said, there's something that person said, there's something that person said, and I'd write five or five push pulls. I didn't care how good they were. I'd write them in the book until my brain started to come up with them easily. Then the next thing I started to do was started to pick not just things people were saying. I started to work with things people were saying, doing, or an object in the room, like a sweater, right? You could tease, them, tease that, that girl about her sweater. Um, something she's saying. Maybe she said something just random and goofy and you can tease her. You're such a dork, you can't even talk. And you start to have fun with it, right? Um, and then another one is, um, is something they're doing. Maybe somebody stumbled a little bit and you same thing. You're such a dork, you can say the same thing. You're such a dork, you can't even walk, you know? And we're gonna have to take you through walking lessons. Come here, come here. We'll make you graceful, don't worry. We'll get you to walk sexy, just a little bit of practice. And the reason I'm emphasizing so many pushes is because that's what terrifies you guys. If you guys are a nice guy at all, you're probably gonna be afraid of the pushes. You're probably gonna be afraid to, to put those gentle, playful pushes. And that's where I want you to emphasize that that's the case. A lot of you nice guys have been giving compliments like crazy. Like you, you go nuts with the compliments. Maybe someday we'll talk about that because there's a way to be really attractive with compliments, really sexy with compliments. It's just like, one compliment after another done in such a grounded, unattached way that it pulls women in, but that's a whole nother thing. Most guys can't pull that off. Most guys will come across needy, dorky, weird, strange, 
and it won't pull girls in, it'll push them away. But maybe someday we'll demonstrate that and play with that too. I want to do that one with a woman though. Um, so getting back to this, are you ready to learn to push pull? Get your journal, start practicing. Then start practicing in the mirror. Get the tone and the inflection right. Start recording yourself on tape, watching yourself back. Do I feel good? Is my heart open? Am I closed? Am I heavy? Start doing it with your buddy. Go back and forth, tease each other. I mean, guys should be doing this with each other all the time anyways, giving each other shit, back and forth, flowing until you can do it spontaneously. Walk down the street with your buddy and every person you see do a push-pull. Every a random objects do a push-pull. Go for 10 minutes straight. You know, do a push-pull, then he does a push-pull. Then, 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 then you see somebody else, you do a push-pull, then he does a push-pull. You don't have to say it to those people, you say it to each other. Those people, you don't want those people to hear you while you're practicing. You're gauging each other's tone and quality and how you're flowing with it. And then in time, watch, they'll just start coming out of you. It only took about a week for me to start naturalizing this, for it to start coming out of me naturally and started flowing out of me. And then once you get a few hits from it, and a few women responding powerfully, starting to flirt with you, it becomes that much more powerful. So for this week, uh, I know this isn't a Fearless Friday video, but for this week, you could add it into your Fearless Friday videos if you want. You can go out every day and take 10 minutes and just practice push-pulling. Walking down the street, you can journal in your notebook, push, pull. And if you do a little bit of each, because the journaling has a certain effect, and then the physical doing has a certain effect, if you have time, then record. And if you do it for three days straight, so a little recording, a little journaling, a little notebook over a weekend, you're gonna have a huge effect. And then for the rest of the week, pick one of those things each day and do it. Either journaling, practicing with your friend, recording, and every day do at least 10, 15 minutes. And by the end of that first week, you're gonna see a difference. And if you like the difference, keep building on it. Add a little more the next week and the next week till it starts to become natural. Oh, and one more thing. Go out and watch some really good comedians. Watch how they do it. Not self-deprecating, sad, poor me comedians, ballsy comedians. Go out and watch how they're ballsy, how they're forward, how they tease, how they play with the audience. You don't have to take it that far. Remember, a little bit goes a long ways. And then, uh, and this is really important also, I keep forgetting things, is once you start teasing a beautiful girl and you start having fun and she's laughing and she opens up to you and you see she's having a good time, back up a little bit once and see if she wants to, like if she starts to surrender to you, like you're starting to be too powerful for her, you're, maybe you're getting too good at this, don't bowl her over, that's what I'm trying to say. Don't, don't just plow through, just relax a little bit, slow down, get to know her a little bit because if you've done a really good job of teasing her, she's probably gonna wanna get to know you. She's probably gonna wanna have a normal conversation because she's interested in you. So let that happen. And maybe we can go through that in a demo someday too. Um, I wanna bring more girls on here, by the way, to do this stuff. And I think I'm gonna have a girl on here for push-pull. I'm gonna have a girl on here to demo uh, going down to this stuff, going down into uh, a connection, like rapport, and we'll start showing you this stuff firsthand. And if you guys really wanna see that stuff, make sure you comment in the videos about it. Uh, hopefully you like this video, make sure to like, make sure to subscribe, and make sure to share. For anybody that needs to see this content, make sure to share. And uh, with that said, remember, only the confident really live. I'll see you in the next video.